take all the glory. Minister to your people today, O God. And Father, let us all be blessed. Take all the glory, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The title of my message is, Don't Be an Absent Father. I will not be an absent father in the name of Jesus. And that leads me to a scripture. Mark chapter 5, verse 21 to 24. It's more than that, but just let us stop at 24. Mark 5, 21 to 24. I will read. The Bible says, when Jesus went in the boats back to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him. A leader of the synagogue named Jairus came there, saw Jesus, fell at his feet, 33, sorry, 23. He begged Jesus saying again and again, my daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so she will be healed and will live. So Jesus went with him. I'll just stop there. So Jesus went with him. The first thing that came to my mind when I was reading this was in verse 22. He is a leader of the synagogue. One thing you need to understand is when it comes to, a, I mean, the Bible says he's a leader. Some verses say it's a ruler of the synagogue. When it comes to a ruler in the synagogue, they don't always like Jesus. And Jesus don't always like them. Because they go by the law of Moses. And when Jesus came, he more or less tried to change it, but they would not allow him. So, in other words, when it comes to a leader, uh, uh, a leader of the synagogue, which is a ruler of the synagogue, they are always called rabbi or rabbi, and which means a teacher. Because they're teachers, it always says, many of the rabbis are employed by the synagogue's congregation to lead worship and provide spiritual guidance. Like I mentioned earlier, they follow the law of Moses. So it's more like the, where we are. There's rules, there's regulation, there's policy, there's law, whether we like it or not. And there's also where we follow the Christian law. So, but at the same time, there is a rule in this country. But in the time of Jesus, they followed the law of Moses. That is what governed the nation then or the society then. So, and they make sure people abide by it. When it comes to what Jesus mentioned in Matthew 23, Matthew 23 verse 1, I'll just quickly read just very few part of it. This is where... Uh, Jesus was criticizing the religious leader. Just to let you know that even when Jesus was around, they don't, they don't always agree. In Matthew 23 verse 1, it says, And then Jesus said to the crowds and to the, dis, to the disciples, he said, The teacher of religious law, I'm, looking, I'm reading the NL, NLT, which is New Living Translation. The teachers of religious law, and the Pharisees. In other words, the teachers of religious war, I mean, or the religious law means the, the leader of the synagogue. And he said he cannot combine them with the Pharisees. So he add them together. You know the Pharisees don't like Jesus at all. It says the teachers of the religious law and the Pharisees are the official interpreters of the law of Moses. So practice and obey whatever they tell you because it's the law. You need to obey it. But it says, but don't follow their examples. It says, for they don't practice what they teach. That's Jesus saying, saying that. It says, they crush people with unbearable religious demands and never lift a finger to ease the burden. It says, everything they do is for show. I'll, I'll just I'll stop there. Everything they do is for show. Now he's saying, in other words, obey the law. But don't follow what they're saying. That's what Jesus is saying. In other words, Jesus don't really agree with them at all. And they don't always agree with Jesus. But the Bible says the leader of the synagogue came, that's Jairus, came to Jesus to beg for mercy for his child. And this, that's what actually comes to my mind. So in terms, in, in, irrespective of his role, his title, his crown, he just put it aside only for a child. Only God knows how many children is God. Maybe that's the only child is God. And he's even 12 years old. And you know what? He's even a daughter. Most of the time, people will say, ah, a daughter, it doesn't matter. The son is the one. But whether a son or a daughter, they are all the same. But you know what? He says, you know what? I don't care how old my child is. I don't care if I've got three or four or 20 children. This one is important to me as a father. 
So in other words, it actually exemplifies it's the spirit of fatherhood at that particular moment. He put down his title, his whatever crown he's got, said, you know what, I've got to go, go for Jesus. Only God knows how many doctors or how many prayer and fasting he would have done before Jesus was his last resort. I don't even know. Maybe Jesus was the first one, but it, because he never actually mentioned anything here. Because as a leader of the synagogue, uh, to me, I would have believed that he would have tried other avenues to see, make sure the child was actually healed. But nothing, nothing actually happened. Everything failed. The doctor failed. Even prayer and fasting may have failed. I don't know. But say, you know what? This is the person we used to criticize. That and I can hear because they would have been hearing about Jesus. The miracles he would have done. And you know what? The Bible says he went to the other side. Then he met Jarius or Jarius met him. He actually did some miracles before that particular period. He would have been hearing of, you know what? These people that have been criticizing, this, people, this guy that we don't even like, he's been doing signs and wonders. You know what? I think this might be my last hope. Let me put aside everything. Even as a father, let me put aside everything that I know, that I know how to do. Let me go after this man. So maybe basically Jesus, Jesus might be his last hope and he went for Jesus. So he put aside everything. It, do, it doesn't matter what the doctors are saying. Even the doctors cannot even heal the child. He must, like I said, he must have prayed. He must have fasted. But nothing actually happened. So Jesus was his last hope. So irrespective of the differences between this leader of, this, of the uh, synagogue and Jesus, irrespective of the differences, he said, no, well, I must go after this man. And he went after the man. So this is what now happened. I was looking at this. So no, when we go to so when we look at Revelation 4:4, 4, 4, we talk about the 24 elders where they put aside their crown and they worship him, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The next thing that came to my mind when I was looking at this is the Bible says that he begged Jesus. He did not only beg, he actually worshiped Jesus. It's like, please, you are my last hope. He worshiped, he worshiped him. To say, in order, in order for his child to be saved, for his child to be healed, he worshipped him. He put aside his crown, his rose, and he went down and worshipped Jesus, his maker. So one thing I like about Jairus is he never gave up. As a father, he never gave up. He never lose hope for his child. He know that, you know what, this child can be healed. And I know there's only one person that can do it, that can heal him. And he went for Jesus. Just like Jesus, uh, God never give up on each one of us. The Bible says in Isaiah 49, 15 to 17. The Bible says, can a woman forget a nursing child? The Bible says they can actually forget their nursing child. But that particular moment, the fatherhood of Jairus came out and said, no, I cannot forget my child. This child, it doesn't matter how many I've got. Maybe that's even the, last, the only one I've got. I must not forget my child. So the fatherhood actually came up. Just like the fatherhood of God always come up for each one of us. He never give up on any one of us. So see, this is the art of a child, of a father to, a, to, the, to our child. It says, and this is the spirit. The Bible did not mention if that's the only child is God. Maybe that's the only one is God. But the Bible also says, you know what, where the Bible says that uh, there's one, sheep, one shepherd that left 99 sheep and go after only one. Maybe that's the only one is God, or maybe it's God 99 children. Nobody knows because the Bible did not record it. And there was one song that kept on coming to my mind when I was looking, reviewing this. The, Bible, you know, the song says, When my heart is overwhelmed, it lead me to the rock that is higher than high. No, the, his heart was overwhelmed. Said, what is the last hope for me? Where can I go? His heart is over, over, really overwhelmed. And what, because his heart is overwhelmed, he leads him to the rock. And the rock is Jesus that is higher than what he used to know. The qualities of Jairus, which I wrote down, is is available for his child. And that's what a father needs to do, to be available for their children. It doesn't have to be only one child. For every children you've got as a father, you need to be available. And one thing about Jairus is it's also there for that child. Is there. When we see what is going on in society today, we can see that many fathers are not available. They're not even there. There's so many times that, <clears throat> that my wife, we 
go for most of the uh, criminal cases she does. And uh, most of them are either murders or crime or drugs and uh, always involving the, maybe the black teenagers or maybe in their 20s. The first thing I always ask her when she come back home is, is the father there as well in the court? And most of the time she always say, no, they're not there. It's always the mothers that are there. So you should not be wondering, where are the fathers? So for Jarius is available. He's always there. He never neglects his child. He never neglects his child. So he's always there till the end, just to make sure the child is healed. The next one I have is he cares for his children or he cares for his child. He never threw money to say money will do everything. So he makes himself available. He is not an absent father. I have, we have a friend, some of us have a friend, um, he's a plumber to, to me, and I know Brother Kola knows the guy. To me, I, I've asked the guy, I said, he's from Jamaica. How many children have you got? Ten. With ten baby mamas. I said, are you responsible for ten? He said, ah, I'm not responsible for them. Their mother is responsible for them. That's what we have in the society today. So they don't want to be responsible. He's not a young guy. I think he might be around 40, I think. Between 40 and 45. Are you going to marry? No. Because I've got baby mamas. They will take care of my 10 children. So I was wondering, what kind of life is that? So it's an, to me, it's an absent father. It's not, he, if at times it doesn't work. And at times when he's hungry, he goes to baby mamas to eat there. That's his life. So it's not, it's just an absent, to me, it's just an absent father. It's not responsible at all. And just Jarius, one of the qualities for Jarius is he's willing to go to any length for his child to be healed. And one of the qualities is he's never ashamed. As a leader of the synagogue, he needs to be ashamed to go to Jesus because they always criticize Jesus. He's never ashamed. He's willing to do anything, put aside his crown so he's ready for anything. One of the qualities also is he does, not, he does not want his child to be statistics or bad news. If, he, if she died, yeah, he'll be part of the, the children that died. He doesn't want his child to be statistics or bad news. And also, he, does, he did not allow his busy schedule to overshadow his only responsibilities. He's a busy, as a leader, he's a busy guy. There's no doubt about this. If you check the Bible, they are always busy. The ruler of the synagogue, they are busy. They don't have the time. But for one child, he makes sure he put aside how busy he is and make sure he focus on the, that child. And of course, he got the result. The child died, but eventually, because we didn't go to that side, but he, the child died, but eventually he, he, she, she, Jesus, Jesus um, came, came through for, for the child. And also, he does not leave it to the mother. And that's what is going on in society today. They're leaving it to the mother to do, to the mothers to do the work. He is available. He doesn't say, oh, you mother, you take care of that responsibility because I am busy. He is there for that child till the end, till he got his results. And that's lead me to the next one. That's Jarius. Jarius. The next one is the Shunammite woman's husband. Some of us will know. Um, if we go to 2 Kings chapter 4, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 18. I'll just read maybe one or two verses. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 18. The Bible says, when the child had grown. We all know the story that leads to this. This is a Shunammite woman that doesn't have a child. Then he had an encounter with Elisha through hospitality. And Elisha prayed for her, and she bare a child, a son, and the son grew. So, verse 18, when the child had grown, he went out one day to his father's among the reapers. And he said to his father, oh, my head and my head. The father said to his servants, hear this, the servant said to his servants, carry him to his mother. And when he, uh, when, when he had lifted him and brought him to his mother, the child sat on a lap till noon, and then he died. I will just stop there. Look at what happened. The child said, I'm sick. And what the father said, carry him to the mother. And that is what we have in the society today. 
the, the father are absent. They're not ready. The, the one, the child was sick and the father went to, the, uh, to any length to make sure he seek the, uh, seek the help of Jesus. There's another one. The child, the child was sick and he couldn't do anything at all. The next thing that came up to his mind is he delegated that responsibility to the servant and also to the mother. It does, it's too busy. Remember, they are at work. Oh. They are, because the Bible says among the reaper, that means they are busy at work. And the child was also there. But it was too busy with, for profits because he needs to make profits. And he said, look, take him to the mother. He, even, he cannot even take him to the mother. He said, take him because he doesn't know what he needs to do. When I was looking at this, the first thing that came to my mind, I said, let me look at the um, qualities of this man. Because when you look at me, that's why he doesn't even have a name. They just say, Shunammite woman's husband. As a father, that's the Shunammite woman's husband. It's lay, to me, it's lay, very laid back. When we make a contrast between him and Jairus, he is very laid back. He doesn't know what he needs to do. The next one says, due to his busy schedule, is not available for that child at all. It's, it's, it's not just there. It's not, it's not there. Number three, he does not care about the health of his child. He's, he's not worried. It's like, take him to the mother. The mother will sort him out. Number four, he delegated the responsibility to his servant and to his mother. The, to the mother of the child. The mother to sort the child out. Number four, he says, he does not know what to do. Look at Jarius. Jarius said, let me look for Jesus. And he makes sure, he, know, he knows when Jesus will cross to the other side, he was there waiting. This uh, Shunammite woman's husband, he does not even know where to go. He knows about Elisha. He knows there are doctors in the society. And it's not that he's poor. It's not poor. They're very rich. But he doesn't go to the doctor. He doesn't even go to Elisha. He doesn't do anything. He just said, take him away. That's how some father does. They just pass on the responsibility. And lastly, he's too busy for work and profits. So that's the way I see it. He wants, the, he said, look, because it's at work, he cannot leave that work. And that's what we have in the society nowadays. People are delegating their rights and responsibilities to others, especially to the mothers. That's why we celebrate the mothers as well. And that's why you can see, like I mentioned earlier, mothers are well celebrated more than Father's Day. Lately, you see a lot of irresponsible fathers who intentionally, just like I mentioned, who intentionally make sure they impregnate having baby, a lot of baby mamas. I want I mean, I know one of them. I just don't want to mention because of the video in America, having many, many children with different baby mamas. But he's rich. I mean, he, I know the guy. He's very rich. So, but it's not about money, but just being there. There's no way you can have 10 or 20 children and be responsible for them. You can't be there. You might be giving them money, but you don't know their individual needs. You wouldn't know. There's no doubt about this. But we have a lot of baby mamas, sorry, baby fathers with no money, no plan, no plan for that children. They don't have any plan and they don't even have any future. And that's why you see many of them, when the child now grow or grew or whatever we can, we can say, and they now become successful, they now come and say, that's my child. You see many of them, you say, that's my child. That's why at times you see some, some grown-up men, you see them on the streets, they're very, very poor, but their children are very, very rich and they do nothing to, to, to make sure they save them. And that's why they say, oh, so, 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 it's your son. You say, yes, my son is not taking care of me. Well, you'll be wondering, what did you do when the guy, when the child was young? You're not there. And that's why we, know, we can see some statistics. It says almost 2.7 million children have no father figure at home. Almost 71% of high school dropouts are fatherless. Children of fatherless home are more likely to be poor, more in, become involved in drugs, in alcohol, abuse, drop out of school, and even suffer health problems. There are many of them. And also says 25 to 33% of, I will just use African-American men, are spending their time in prison. If they're in prison, what would they do? Some of them are serving 33 years, 40 years imprisonment. How can they be a father? And their children are at home. 
That's why some people say a dead father is better than an absent father. So it's better for that father not to be there at all. He's gone. Than an absent, I'm not saying father, you are available, but you're not responsible at all. So there's so many of them. Just like I mentioned in my notes, I said some fathers are supposed, they are not supposed to focus only on their rights and forget their responsibilities. Many are forgetting their responsibilities. It should not be the courts that should tell you how to tell a father how to be responsible. You see many, many uh, courts telling you must give, how much are you earning? 2,000 pounds. You must give your wife and the child, children uh, 1,000. They will be the one that will order. Some men don't even know that they, need, they should have been doing that. Is it the court that will tell them how to do it? And that's why some people will say, oh, for example, in my former church, some people went to a pastor and said, oh, um, there's no men seminars. The pastor said, this is an instinct. You are the one that gave back to the children or that marry. It's your instinct that will tell you that you need to take care of your wife and you should also take care of your children. Does, do you need to do 20 seminars to tell you what to do? It doesn't make sense. It's an instinct that you need to take care and be responsible to, for your wife and also for the children. Take care of them. We don't need to do too, much, too many seminars. There's some seminars they will not even come anyway. So what's the point? So it's not, the, it's not the courts or the seminars that will tell you how to provide for your family, how to provide food and shelter for your children, or how to be responsible for your children. It's not a seminar. It's not the court that will have to do that. But many, if you notice, the court is the one doing it a lot, even more than seminars. And now going back to Mark chapter 5, Jarius, when we look at Jarius, he was a father that knows his rights, and it's a responsibility. And that's what if all the fathers need to mirror. They need to take care of their family. This is not only about the child, also their wives as well. They need to be responsible. But what would we do? What would we, what, I mean, what can we see in the society? There's no responsibility. I'll cite one example. There's a father and son. They went on a fishing trip. When they went on a fishing trip, um, on the, so when they came back, so a friend to the father asked the father, I said, how was your fishing trip? So the guy was just complaining. Ah, um, things were not very, this absolutely miserable. Uh, we didn't catch any fish. He was just complaining about everything that went wrong for that, on that fishing trip. And a son, sorry, a friend to the son also asked the son, I said, how was your fishing trip with the father? The, the son also says, it wasn't that good. But one thing I like is I have a quality time with my, with my father. But the father never said that. He, just, he was just saying everything was miserable. He didn't say he has a quality time with his son. But the son says, I have a quality time. That's what matters most to, to that son. That I have a quality time with my father. But many, like I said, many fathers are not there. How can they have a quality time with their, with their children? When we look at... Um, Galatians, sorry, there's one in summary. And as I round up, Galatians 6, verse 7. Galatians 6, 7. It says, we should not be deceived. God is not mocked. But whatever a man sows, that he will reap. That also he will reap. The Bible says, and as long as the heart remains, there will be springtime and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night. That's Genesis 8, 22. When we look at it, it says, whatever a man sows, the man shall reap. If you don't sow, a, if you don't sow, a, if, you, if, if you don't have a quality time with your children, you will reap it. That's what he's trying to say. The story of a man, when, uh, when the child, the children, not the child, when the children were growing up, he doesn't have time. He has money. So he threw money to everything. Anything the children need. He has servants. He, has, um, he delegates everything. He has money. He can, give, he can throw money to everything the children need. He doesn't have time for them. So, because he's busy. That's the reason why. So he goes to work and uh, he's a businessman. So the money is there. So no problem. So when, but 
thank God. Because he was throwing money into it, yeah. But the children were noticing that, ah, we can see money, we can see that for this father. Of course, he was delegating the responsibility to the servants and also to the mates and also to the mother. So when the children grew up, they left the house. So when they left the home, and he also, and that's one thing we need to understand. As we are growing, so as our children are growing, we are growing too. Uh -huh. So we're not, as they are growing, we're not there. We, we are growing too. And a lot of things are keeping us busy. One day they will finish. Yeah, we're, we're working and working now. When we start getting to 60s and 70s, we can't work anymore. So when the, child, when the children went left, yeah, of course, he started growing as well. Then the business was not doing good. So yeah, he couldn't go to work. He couldn't do anything anymore because he, he, has, he has grown, he himself has grown old. And the children have left home. And he's now the only one at home. Then he started calling the children, my children, I'm the only one at home. Won't you come and say hello to me? And she now said, we're also busy too. Daddy, do you want money? We'll give you money. So these children started throwing money to him as well. But their time, they didn't give it to him because that's what is so. But that's what I'm saying. As a father, we cannot afford not to spend a quality time with our children. Which just that Jarius did he is always there. He is available. He's not an absent father. I know that's not what we do in this church. We're always available. But we can see what is going on in society. Fathers are not available. Like I mentioned earlier, most of the time, I'm always asking my wife, when it's time she, she come back from work, when there's a criminal case of youths, they, they, I mean, which they prosecute, I always ask her, where is the father? I don't even ask her, is the father in the, their lives? I always ask her, is the father in the courts? You say, no. Most of the time, it's always no. Am I right? She always tell me, they're not there because the fathers are not there available. But that's why we need to make sure right from their youth, we must be there till the end because when, just like I said, whatever we sow, we will reap. So my prayer is we will reap good things from our children in the name of Jesus. As I round up, I just want us to rise up so that we can pray. I want us to rise up this morning. I want us to pray that, Lord, 